Bangladesh has the unenviable position of facing glacier melt from the north and rising seas from the south. In a good year, 20% of the country is underwater due to monsoon floods. When you bring climate change into this scenario, it compounds and increases people's exposure to these, these kinds of risks and the dangers that come with them. You can't fail to be impressed by how hardworking and how resilient communities are. Villagers have raised their houses onto plinths. They have floating gardens with turmeric and new crops that they haven't used before. Solar powered floating schools that go around the river islands. People are doing a lot of things. The question is, uh, will any of it be enough? And no one really knows the answer to that question. There's a possibility that we will be looking at a four degree rise by 2050. And when you put that prediction in front of Bangladeshi scientists, they just throw up their hands in horror and say, we can't possibly adapt to that. People's lives in these villages are tied up with the land and any change in that environment means they won't have enough to eat or their house will go underwater. We've known now for the last, mm, at least the last decade, that the poorest countries in the world are going to be the hardest hit by climate change and are already experiencing the impacts. You can't see adaptation as defeatist or the dirty side of climate science anymore. You have to engage with it. And any attempt to reduce carbon emissions has got to go hand in hand with funds and support for the poorest countries to deal with the impacts. We're so protected from the impacts of what our own pollution is doing to the world and going to Bangladesh really brings that home to you and the injustice of that. <laughs>